Hi, everybody. Good evening. Uh, my name is Alan. On behalf of the crew of the show, I'd like to welcome you to another edition of Bridging Heaven and Earth. You know, anybody who's watched the show before know we talk about, and we have guests uh, who, who talk about and bring you the experience of what we call the oneness, dedicated to the oneness, an experience of the one love, the one truth, the one God, the one the one place where separation doesn't exist, the one place where division doesn't exist. And again tonight we have women who have come and have traveled the world bringing that experience, that joy, that connectedness to the one, to, to as many people as they can reach. I mean, one does it in her way and the other does it in her way, but the experience is of that truth, is of that love. And tonight we're just tremendously honored to have with us Chris Griscom, who's an internationally acclaimed spiritual teacher, healer, and visionary. She is the founder of the Light Institute of Galisteo and the Nizoni School of Global Consciousness. She has been one of the foremost leaders in the new age if we can use those terms her books are just seminal works in in growth and experience she has written a new book is called soul bodies i'm sure we'll talk about that that talks about the acceleration of this time the acceleration coming into the to the millennium to the year 2000 and what that means for all of us here on planet earth she wrote a book ecstasy is a new frequency that I know has changed tremendous numbers of lives and she also wrote Time is an Illusion. She has videos, Windows to the Sky, An Ageless Body. I mean she's just an extraordinary being and she's come all the way, actually she flew in from India yesterday and her, the Galisteo Institute is in uh, Galisteo, New Mexico. So we're just honored to have Chris with us today. So, and also we have a sacred dancer who also is internationally known and renowned, who's an instructor and a performer of sacred dance. Uh, she facilitates sacred dance uh, workshops throughout the world. And these workshops, again, are, are on focusing and anchoring spiritual, the spiritual essence into that truth, into that self-acceptance, into that love. And Astara is just, she's, now she's in Santa Barbara. I think she's moving to another place soon, and she just came from another place. So we're lucky to have her with us as she passes through, because her work and her movement and her toning brings that experience again for all of us to experience and to share. So as we normally do at this time to set a tone for the show, please join me in a short meditation. Just try to close your eyes, relax. If you know a meditation technique, do it. If not, just follow your breath. Just, just relax. Whatever you did today, it's gone. Be here. Be with this show tonight, and I think you'll have an experience that's, that's really worthwhile. So please join me. Thank you. And we're going to start tonight's show with a sacred dance by Astara called Invocation of the Feminine. So when everyone, everyone's ready, Astara, please. <laughs> Thank you. 
Hi, welcome. Thank you, Astara. That was beautiful. We're here with Chris Griscom on the set. Hi. Hello. Welcome. So welcome. happy to be here, Alex. Yeah, it's great to have you here. Thank you. So why don't you just fill people in who are not so familiar with your story? I mean, how did, how did you become like involved in, in spiritual work and make it your life's work to heal, the, you know, to help heal the planet and all? I think it's all of our life's work. And what I would not everybody recognizes. Say, yeah, what I'd rather say is that if we could all discover that our thoughts and our feelings affect the planet. Uh, there are so many points in my life that began a new opening, a new opening to being visible, because that's the key, in saying, I want to speak out or I want to uh, give something off, because all of us want to give peace and joy to this planet. But I had an experience when I was 20 in the Peace Corps in which a, a baby died in my arms. And it threw me into the conversation of what's the purpose of our lives and uh, life and death and the fact that consciousness is beyond body. And that opened for me all of those dimensional spaces that forced me, in a way, to reevaluate um, what could bring joy and what had purpose. So I got a little cosmic boot, uh, and we all get cosmic boots. And I had to uh, move from that into this world. And then when, you, when that happened to you, that's when you started doing the acupuncture, acupressure that, yes. that led you? And well, I, I was willing then to say, I want to participate in your health. I want to participate in your joy. I, I want to belong to this planet. Because I think most of us in the, you know, in the tradition of E.T., have said, I don't belong here, uh, this can't be my fate, this, this is not my family. And so, at some point we all have to understand that the human family does belong to us, we are part of it. How can we not be part of it, I mean, once you have a certain experience, but I mean, it is, until you have that, that's it right. seems separate, I that's mean, we right. talk about that, yeah. Well, that's why I love that you talk about the oneness, because we've been trained to think about the separation, the difference, the difference, the difference, instead of the oneness. And to connect with the oneness, we must uh, find a place that's full inside and then extend out from that place to be willing to receive and to give uh, on a different level, a different kind of measurement. You know, not I give to you and then what do you give to me, but I receive from the cosmos, therefore I can't help myself but to participate in your life and to understand that what happens to you happens to me. The, that's the key. the connectedness. That's right. Right, right. That's right. So, I mean, and what steps, so, I mean, when did you start the institutes, and how did all this happen that, you know, you became, did you start writing books first, or how did that I work? Did. I did. Uh, I began writing, and I can't remember when, right. 84 or something like that. I and I can uh, barely remember what happened two days ago, so <laughs> I know, it, right. It's all, that right, kind of blew, but, but right. through the writing, it, it allowed me to then have a voice. Mm -hmm. And we each have a voice in a different way. And mm -hmm. Some people have a voice by just smiling at someone, and they don't realize mm -hmm. that their smile well, changes all, somebody's life. Well, we, we think of things in such a gross way. It's like yes. vibration. So, I mean, right. if, you're, if you're feeling love here, you're changing the whole universe. That's right. But we don't recognize that. It's like, what have you accomplished? But the reason we don't recognize that, again, is that we're waiting for the world to say, yes, you have it. We give you permission to be visible, mm -hmm. rather than letting go of the conversation of visibility and coming back to, like a child, what do I want to give? I want to give you my smile or I want to be in the world with you. And uh, so as we enjoy that, it becomes easier rather than measuring, will someone notice me mm -hmm. at my Light Institute? One of the things that's very important in, in training facilitators of consciousness is that they're willing to be invisible to the degree to which they let somebody else be center stage, let somebody else explore their lives. And uh, if you can do that, if you can be a Johnny Appleseed, mm -hmm. uh, then I think that you'll be much more peaceful rather than always saying, D did you notice that I, that I had good intentions? You know, because our good intentions are, are not, they're there and they're not there. Right. There are very few words I could say, you know, like, well, I talk about love and, you know, loving somebody. And it's like if love in involves selflessness, yes. then very few of us are even capable That's of it. That's right. One of so the things that I learned in the Peace Corps was you must understand that you're doing it for you. And as you do that, you realize that you're full. And so you can actually afford yeah, to let somebody else right. be right, to let somebody else be the star, to let somebody else be, again, center stage. So uh, 
actually, what I think is true is that our life happens to us. We don't have to go out and make something happen. You know, an institute happened to me. The, the place that I live said, I want to be an institute. It's a very old, old home. I want people to come here and to laugh and cry and be born here and all of those things. And so and it you just, just began to went occur. Along with it. Exactly. Same with the school, same with all of my stuff. I just wander about letting life happen. My higher self says, use life. I had six near death experiences, and so I've learned that tomorrow isn't very relevant, but I'm having a great time here with you right now. Right. Yeah, I know what you use mean. Use life. I mean, I mean, it's interesting because everyone's here today and gone tomorrow in that That's sense. Right. It's just which day. So, I mean, That's might as well right. enjoy today, you know. Right. But, I mean, I, you know, we talk about this a lot, but, I mean, I think all the spiritual paths and all the, the, the tools are to bring you into the moment. That's right. And that's where life exists and that's where everything exists. That's right. And that's basically what all your books through one, you know, one spoke yes. on the wheel come to. Right. right. And that's basically the whole work of the Institute and the school and right. all that. The conversation is you already have it. You know, spirituality isn't something that you can buy you're or sell. Made of, right. you're, you're made of it, you're born with it. And so what's happening on the planet is that new energies are coming and they're pushing us all to find uh, more solutions or a more sense of life or a more connectedness than we, than we had before. And that's what's so exciting about being alive at this time. It's a great time. It's a fantastic time. Yes, it is. I mean, it, it's in a way, I mean, I was seeing it, you know, we get calls from all over. There's a lot of intensity around. You probably do, too. That yes. People are going through a lot of stuff. That's right, especially right now. But if we can just greet that with some kind of inner smile, because it's all a process of letting go of what doesn't serve humans at this time and, and finding the strength inside. And ultimately, doesn't serve us, of course. Of course. Right. Uh, but to really discover what we have inside, because it's fantastic. Again, I just came back from India, and I can look in the eyes of someone, whether they're begging in the street or they're some high official, and uh, I can see uh, that divinity, that spark of life that's there beyond the sense of the self. And uh, so we need to ignite that, in a way, in each other, that, that recognition that life is sacred. And, um, we must live it for ourselves. Yeah, I mean, I, I, you know, I think that's what we, you know, when we talk about, you know, doing the show and what it's about, it's like putting out a vibration of love and then whatever yes. path people take when that's, that's right. lit. And that's, you know, when I started looking through your work, I mean, that yes. was the experience I got, is that's yes. what she's trying to do. Yes. Now, you know, you use a lot of different ways of getting there, and, yes. you know, using the ageless body, when, you know. Right. But it doesn't it's all matter. Irrelevant. It's, all, it's all irrelevant. It's all irrelevant. All irrelevant. Right. And what I think is very important for people is to understand that, not to live our lives, you know, with talking heads, not to live with the concepts, but to realize that love is an energy, ecstasy is an energy, joy is an energy, giving is an energy. It's not a, just a thought form. And it so, feels fantastic in yes, the human body. That's what's great yes. about it. And so we want right. to, all of my books uh, are about finding the tools to discover inside yourself. W what does the feeling of love feel like? How do you experience it right this moment? You know, uh, often I give a class in ecstasy at my school, and it's very important for them to experience that they can access ecstasy right at this moment. And what it is for you right now will be something different a half an hour from now or tomorrow. Mm -hmm. But the moment that you're willing to say, mm, let me be ecstatic, and I use ecstasy a lot because uh, it helps us to disconnect from the separation. Mm -hmm. The very energy of ecstasy is inclusion. It's being part of the cosmos so much so, so intensely so, that you forget your individual self. Right. It's and bigger. So it's bigger. Right. And we're all so much bigger than we think we are. Right. Yeah, that's the amazing part. But until you experience that, you don't know that. Then you're, you know, male, female, this religion, that religion. Yes. That's and and why, that's when you have all the, the holy wars. And yes, exactly. I think that's why at the Institute we began with the exploration of multi-incarnations. Uh, the incarnations of the soul, that the soul moves us through our infinite lifetimes so that we can get over, get over ourselves about being male or female or American or rich or it poor. It is so silly. You know, it's you know, I mean, you have been all right. those things that right. you resist. Right. <laughs> and all of those things that you desire are already in here. And so we must come home to the self. 
And we have to do that experientially, again, not by our talking heads. Mm -hmm. So if someone was to come, now, now what type of people come to the institute and what type of people come to the school? I mean, are, are they young people, older? I mean, how does it work? No, they, they cross all barriers. The school and the institute are international because I've had the great fortune of having my books translated into about 13 languages. So they're very global. Uh, and their appeal. It doesn't matter what someone does. It, it matters that someone is saying, I have to know it. I have to feel it. Uh, it's, it's there in me and I don't know how to get it. And so they come to plug into themselves, let's say. We don't do it for them. Uh, we don't do any fancy techniques. When I was 15, I started with hypnosis for incarnational energies, and then I went to classical music and massage, and then I went to golden acupuncture needles, and then everybody said, just give me the golden acupuncture needles and I'll find my higher self. So I had to give up all of the techniques and say, no, the self is within you. Mm -hmm. Take a moment and make that connection. And then whatever you're asking about in your life comes to the surface because the mind of the cell holds everything. And so um, you already have that. And as you begin to ask the questions, it unfolds for you. And that what, that's what ripples out and changes your life. We don't have to struggle to change our lives. We can let life come to us from a place of what we call soul centering. You know? But wouldn't you say that, that that is like a you could describe that as a certain faith and that has to be in no, a way it's, has to it's grow. irrelevant it's irrelevant because what i've discovered is uh, and i love to work with the ones who don't have faith like for example someone who is very intellectual or a scientist I don't mean faith or somebody like that in a that. traditional sense but mm -hmm. faith in the experience that the experience is there that joy is there that ecstasy is there well once because you experience it you don't even need the conversation of faith because it's true for you because it's there mm -hmm. it's only afterward that we say is it enough was well, it don't real? They, can real? it only happen at the institute when you, when Chris is there? I mean, isn't that one? I'm of the irrelevant things? at the institute, and that's what I love. Well, or at the, in other words, at the institute when all these other people are around, can I experience that at home with my family that's at my job? That's the whole point. Right, I know that's the point, but I think yes. that's where you know that people will have faith that really that is what happens after a while. You see, once they connect to their own higher selves, and they have that kind of experience, they realize how free they are. And they, they know that they can be do it, doing it while they're driving their cars. We're multidimensional. I can be talking to you and, and listening to the global arena at the same time, for example. Is it any more interesting? No, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> no. We don't need to distract ourselves. Mm -hmm. What's necessary at this moment is to actually go deeply inside and find that everything is there. Everything is there. If people only understood that they are better than any movie, <laughs> you know. Their lives are better than Their them. lives, right. their thoughts, their feelings, their, the little whimsical things, the little flutter at the edge of their consciousness that allows them to, to see the bird pass or the star, you know, that says, yes, I, I'm a part of that. Somehow it's about me, because it is. So, I mean, are, do you have any, you said you've eliminated most of the tools and techniques, but people come there and something happens. Yes, right. a lot happens. Right, a lot happens. But it happens yes. through them. And uh, we have developed what we call exercises in consciousness, which you use mostly at the Nijoni School for Global Consciousness. So that and you people describe can, some of them yes. in that tape, Windows to the Sky, That's right? right. Part one and two. Right. I've only the, seen one, so yes, <laughs> probably exactly. only half finished. No. That at any second, for example, you could say, and we use the body because one of the things that I've discovered is that most of us are not in our bodies. And so, of course, our bodies uh, cry out to us, and they hurt, or, or they have a flicker of ecstasy, and then depression. So if we can get into the body, into all of our subtle bodies, if we can bring that divine energy into us, we feel joyous. So, for example, you could, right now, as we're chatting with each other, if we said, and maybe all of you can do this at this moment, where am I holding joy at this moment in my body? And just kind of listen inside and let your body tell you. You might feel a little twitch someplace, or you might see a part of your body. You might hear, ah, the joy is in, is in my cheeks at this moment. And then you go into that place in your body, wherever it is for you. For example, where was it for you? Did you, did you try it? 
Where's joy in you right now, yes. Alan? I'd say in here. Great. So now, just bring your consciousness right into here and let your body give you that sense of joy. What does it feel like to you? Or what color is it? Or what's its vibration? You can know all these things. Mm -hmm. So describe for us what that joy is right now. What do you get? I would say it feels like peace or love. Beautiful. So it's a very deep energy. So then, connecting to that peace or love, you can let every cell, the trillions of cells in your body, record that, that sense memory. of peace, that energy. Mm -hmm. It's not really memory because it's happening right now. Right. But to, to imprint it. And then, again, you radiate joy. So I come into contact with you, and suddenly... I might feel a little flutter in my heart or a little Because of the vibration there. of it. Because of the vibrational exchange that's occurring between us. And because you're sitting here in front of millions of people, they will perceive that. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I discovered about television is you can actually see somebody's auric field, their energetic energy, more clearly than you can when you're sitting with them. Because, of course, television divides All us into lines. a trillion little mm -hmm. lines. Right. And so it's easy for the energy that we're carrying to leak out into the world. What a gift. It's amazing, isn't it? Isn't it? It really is fantastic. Yeah. So I guess uh, maybe we'll take uh, a break now and go to A Star is, uh, second set. She's going to do a sacred dance, uh, celebration of the spirit in form, uh, and it's going to be performed by Astara. So whenever we're ready, Astara, celebration of spirit in form. Mm. Why use dance and movement? Because we are here on the planet in physical form and movement, dance and sound are tools that we can use to experience on a very profound level, experience in form our spiritual essence. And so they help to bring us deeper into an awareness and a connection with ourself and a deeper connection with our bodies. And so they brings us the movement and the dance. It helps to bring us into the present and into the now and into the moment and into the connection with the earth. So what happens is it begins to bring us out and down from the mental realm out of our heads and into our bodies and into our feelings and into our senses and so that we begin to open up and experience our natural rhythm and flow. The Earth's energy is feminine and we all have both male and female energy within and as we open to embrace the energy of the Divine Feminine we are actually coming into greater balance of our own inner male and female energy. Feminine energy is the energy of acceptance and love and nurturing and open. It's receiving and expansion. And it is that energy that allows us to really feel on a very deep level our emotions and to really become in our bodies in a very deep awareness of that experience and what that really means. And so as we start to use movement and dance and begin to embody the divine feminine energy, what happens is we begin to release old patterns that have kept us from expressing our truth and our light and our freedom and our ecstasy that have kept us from being in the absolute direct experience. And so the feminine is allowance and acceptance and it grants honor to all. The honor of who we are in this moment now, the honor of 
who we've ever been and who we will ever be. And in this honor, it opens up a flow, a flow for things to move through, such as fears and tensions and anger and worry and sorrow and joy. And expressions are accepted and transmutated in the energy of the feminine. It is the essence of freedom to love and trust ourself. And it is the feminine energy that opens us to embrace and embody the unconditional love and acceptance for ourself. And it is this acceptance that sets us free. So we can use dance as a prayer and as an embodiment and as an expression of this energy and allow it to be a healing force for ourself and for the planet. And so I'll begin with a mudra sound prayer as we celebrate spirit in form. Okay, what you see now is the, uh, we do a flyer every week for uh, Bridging Heaven and Earth and the guests that come into town and are going to be on the show. And this is the one for this week with Chris and a star. And we use different uh, pictures and flyers and uh, we scan it in and then we do it. And we were going to do a show coming up later. And if anyone's interested, you know, they should let us know by email or call about uh, whether they're interested of all the different flyers. I guess we've done about, this is the 71st show, and I guess we've done about you know, 65 flyers or something. So uh, if anyone's interested, you know, let us know, and we'll do a show where we bring out all the flyers and show them that way. So whenever you're ready, Stara.
Ah, uh, thank you, Ashtar. That was beautiful. So we're back on the set with Chris. So in your new book, Soul Bodies, uh, you talk about the accelerated consciousness that's happening. Do you think it's because, you know, in essence, because the year 2000 and the new millennium and all that, or is just happening? Because well, I think there's a wonderful synergy and synchronicity between the fact that we're coming up to the end of a time and a beginning of a time. Many of our appointed dates are kind of created by our own right. focus of energy in right. there. But because of the sunspots and because of the uh, meteor showers and, and all of the ancient traditional uh, groups of people have said, at this moment, this synergistic moment in the cosmos, something new is coming forth. Uh, we can really palpate that. We can feel that. What I think is coming up is that there's a seeding that's taking place of humanity from higher octaves. And so um, that which does not s support our human genetic energy right now is being lifted off and it's freeing us. Um, so my work is very much about what we call psychogenetics, which is to look within the genetic coding through the spiritual genetics and the emotional genetics as well as the physical genetics to find out who we are. So we're having wars right now, we're having tribe against tribe. Why? Because we cannot go on as a species on this planet with the illusion of tribe against tribe. It doesn't fit our reality, our physical reality. So um, there is an activation. Isn't it surprising that it fit it this long? Almost. I mean, in well, it didn't. We just <laughs> ignored it for a right, long time until right. it came to the brink, right. whereby it's, it's either dissolve it, release it, or the two legs disappear from the planet. You know. So yes, it is amazing that that we still exist, carrying all of that. But what's wonderful is to truly experience that we are not going to carry that. It is being lifted out of our genetics. Um, and we are doing that. We are awakening. And I think that's very exciting. And it doesn't mean you have to do anything special. It doesn't mean that you can't be part of you know, the business community or the scientific community. It is something that's happening between humans and our solar system, as well as humans on this planet. And uh, all we have to do is to participate and become aware. Actually, some people have said that what used to go on, the energies and the vibrations that used to go on in like the holy sites or the temples, the, the high Egyptian temples, the whole planet has experienced the, That's the, correct. The, 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 the frequency now. You know, nature has given me a little message and I wrote about it in this uh, Soul Bodies book, which was to say to humans, you don't have to go to a sacred site. Sit down anywhere, even on wherever a cement go, right. ground, wherever you are, and simply connect your consciousness into the Devic realm, into the Devic kingdom, and you will feel that link up that will help us to understand why the weather is as it is. You know, at the Nijoni School, we call the rain. The Hopis of our area of the world have been calling the rain for 4,000 years. Or we, we whisper to the wind. It's always been something that humans could do. I like it uh, because you have a sense of participating because it either rains or it doesn't, you know. And so we need to find that sense of belonging again, that we have the right, that we can trust ourselves enough to participate in what's happening on the planet. So we don't have to go anywhere else. That you're here makes it sacred. Right. And that's true for everyone at all times. At all times. At all times. And of course, you know, again, each place has its sp sp specific little kiss for you. Like if, if every day you could imagine your ocean here in Santa Barbara, you know, or put your finger or your toe in it and perceive it as clear and clean, it would be so. We can transmute pollution and radiation and negativity in the same way we can call the rain. All we need to do is say, let me, let me help. Mm -hmm. Let me belong to this. But even on, on another level, I mean, if we felt it was our one with us or our brother and sister, we wouldn't do what we do to it to pollute it in That's the first right. place. So, I mean, it That's would work. Right. In you see, the reason it happens is that we feel that individually we, we don't, make we don't have the power, right. but we do. And that's what we have to learn. At this time in the planet, we're uh, developing the capacity of, of working together, group consciousness. And we're very afraid of that. Mm -hmm. 
Um, Actually, yeah, I've been ranting on about like even the spiritual community, how yes. like collaboration is almost, you know, everybody's got the right way. Right. And so, I mean, even to as much as linking a website, you uh -uh. know, we can't, def you know, defile our website with linking it <laughs> with Jesus is a Christ. No, won't do it. Anything can't do but it. that. Right. Anything right. but anything mm -hmm. except collaboration. We're I mean, going to have really, to give it up. It seems like it to We're me. We're going to have to give it yeah. up. We're going to get helped here. When Chernobyl happened, uh, for me, it was like graduation day because it said, what happens to you happens to me. What happens any place on this planet affects all of us. And so we're beginning to understand that collaboration serves us all, individually and collectively. Mm -hmm. And we don't need to be concerned that uh, someone else won't have the same as we do. We, here I have a four-year divinity school. Mm -hmm. uh, we give a uh, Bachelor of Science in Divinity. We don't use the word God. We don't talk, talk about our spiritual path because there's so much pollution in our concepts there mm -hmm. that, that we attempt to help people to focus on what can you express of that. And it's so lovely through dance, through sound, through light, through uh, your breath. You make a difference. That's why you're here. And when you're finished, you won't be. Right. I learned that from six near-death experiences. You can't get out until it's time, <laughs> you know. So, might as well uh, come so back into the body. So people cat-like, they're not kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you got three more lives Here to go. Here I come. <laughs> right, holy Here Christ. Here I come, absolutely. So, yes. I mean, for you, it's just an exciting experience day after day just to see yes. people coming and just with that hu yes. hunger. Or, uh, and like, to live with all of it, to live with you know, all of our judgments, but to see ourselves beyond that. To really, uh, as we say at the Light Institute, pierce the heart. Who are you, Ellen? Because you're somebody that I can know. And we can, we can have that little touch. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's what makes life so meaningful. So people come to the Light Institute and, and to the Nijoni School of all ages, and they they have a concept of themselves. And so what we do is we peel that away and we expand and we allow the divine breath to uh, reignite uh, the sense of self in a different way. So it's, it's, it's like from inside and outside. That's right. You break it down and then the mm -hmm. flame will burn it up. That's right. We heal ourselves from the inside. Sometimes we heal ourselves by gesturing into the world, you know, uh, mm -hmm. simply to uh, send a light, send a color to another person. Can, can bring you out of depression because through your consciousness yeah, it takes you out of yourself you which energy. is the only problem that's right it's the only problem you ever exactly. have you well the not phony really you, you. Right, exactly phony. just yeah. your illusion of you right. is there and so it's wonderful to watch people whether they're grappling with their struggling uh, sense of selves or their judgment or their hatreds or any of that and, and watch them come to that experience of something that's beyond their judgment, that's okay, that doesn't need any entrapment, you know, or, or trappings. It's it, perfect just as it is. itself. Just as it is. It's good enough. And, that's and what my it, higher self told me when I started writing, because, you know, you know, whenever you do something artistic, then it's a conversation of communication between you and the outside world, and so it's so easy to fall into, will they approve, will they like it? And my higher self from the beginning just cut that off from me and said, forget just the masterpiece, right, just, do just it. Right. say whatever, do it for yourself, just put it out there. And if anybody wants it, mm. God bless them. If they exactly. Don't, right. But you, you do it for There's yourself. There's a tremendous freedom in that. There is. Right. I there mean, is. to not carry the weight of... And humor. And great humor, because we get so solemn about spirituality, you know, right. and about how it should look and, and who we should be. And uh, I've always enjoyed, I have six children, and they have taught me that you can fall on your face, and, and if you're holding yourself up, they will come and put a little hole in your balloon anyway, you know. And so we have to develop humor. That's how we really, truly experience. It's okay. We're all pretty funny. Yeah, if, if you can look funny. at it that way, you know, and see yourself as part of the play, yeah. I mean, it's a very funny right. play. It's a very <laughs> funny play. And, and all of us as a group, too, as we, you know, fumble around on our planet, and yet we're calling forth the whole cosmos because we have something so unique. Mm -hmm. And it was, uh, in a way, it was like an experiment that got away.
That's, the know, human it's, heart. I, I just thought that because what I always say, well, it's an unbelievable experiment that's going on. That's here. right. That's I mean, right. Just, and, and you can see it as an experiment. That's right. Except the problem a lot of people have is that they don't see their own lives as part of it. So, that's right. you know, everybody else is, everybody else is a dope and pathetic <laughs> and beautiful or anything. Or whatever. But, or whatever. Yeah. I always, um, for example, in exercises in consciousness, when someone is saying, I don't like that person, or they're projecting onto that person, I can't be anything because everybody else is more than me. I always say, what is it about that person? And then where is it inside your body? Right, there's a seat of everything in all of us. Whether it's beauty right. the worst or murderer, humor. The or, worst, exactly. Right. I worked with prisoners a lot, and I learned great things from them. That from the rapist and the killer uh, is the divine spark. And the, actually, truly, the hunger to to connect, to do something good, and sometimes that yeah, it gets they can't diverted find it. over time. That's right. Yeah, I know it's pretty powerful. So I mean, everybody, every human being wants to love and be loved. Yes, period. They do. Simple, they really do. simple. And we have to treat our children in a different way because children want to help, and they're so powerful. We just let them instead of seeing them as helpless and identifying ourselves through them, but actually upholding children, people who are dying. You know, I just got back from India, and people say, well, how could you stand it? What? What? The weather. No. Like, no, no. no, you, no, no. Uh, look into the eyes of another being right. and see the dignity that cannot right. even be if destroyed. They're, right, even if they're begging on the street or starving or anything. Yeah, that I love is there. I had a few good laughs with some of the people begging on the street, you know, uh, because we can get through that, that right. illusion. We truly can. Yeah, I mean, the love is stronger than that, but it has yes. to really be there. It has to be an energy that radiates from right. you. It can't just be a word on your lips. And so, in order for that to happen, there has to be enough experience. Like, you have to have r rubbed up, the way I would look at it, the magnet of love enough, or the yes. magnet of yeah. Well, any second will do. You know, that's, that's the beauty. Because we always think, again, the path, that if I pray enough, or if I uh, discipline myself enough, or if I want to enough, no. You know, at any moment will do. It doesn't take yesterday or tomorrow. If right now, again, you can experience an energy of love, and we always see it in someone else, we always see someone and then we feel that love for them. If we could just see ourselves and feel that love as something that's free, then we can pass it out. So any moment will do. You don't need to wait until you're perfect. You're perfect now. So you can just say, hmm, what's the energy of love? Oh, that's what it feels like. It may feel like passion, or it may feel quiet. You know, it can, it can feel like so many things, but it is an energy, and once you embrace that energy, it's yours to give. It's your power. It's your consciousness. And, and do you find, like, people, f like, all over the world really coming to that more, that there is I that do. acceleration? That, I and do. That your, you know, that your books are really touching people, and, and just every, just the whole energy is changing, and yes. people are being touched more. The beauty is that we humans have this exquisite gift, this human gift. It's the human heart. It radiates out into the cosmos. And so uh, we can link up through that in any moment. You know, whether we read a word or we feel an energy or we make a gesture, it's irrelevant. It's consciousness. Behind it all, it's consciousness. And so uh, you can choose, you have the power to choose at any moment to be a part of the love. You know, and you don't have to well, call I it mean, love. Actually, you, you, you are part of it. It's just how do, how do you get to that recognition or to have that recognition? You get to the recognition by choosing it inside yourself. Where's the love in me in this moment? What does it feel like? How do I perceive it? You know? And then the trick is, of course, and this is a little cosmic giggle for all humans, is when you hold it out and then say, oh, please take my love, you're likely to get some yeah. of that. You know? uh, because once you give it, you have to let go of it yeah. and not say, well, did you notice that I gave you love? You know, or do you or want my love? Or give me some back. Or give, give me some, some back. back. Right. You know, because as soon as you're engaged in that, <laughs> yeah, I know. Then it's your, you're then you're the in game karma. Again. You're going to get a little lesson there. Right. So it's much easier to just experience it and then. <sighs> yeah, just let it overflow from within. That's right. Right. So I guess you know, the show's coming to an end. I mean, they always go so fast, and it's just an amazing experience. So, 
If anybody wants any information on Chris or Star when they're doing workshops about their books, where to get them, about the school, about the institute, please call me anytime, 805-687-2053. Uh, we're just honored, you know, to have a star and Chris with us tonight, and we're honored to have you guys with us. And I just again want to thank you for all the calls and the information and the emails and everything that we get from you that inspires us. To, to do more and to try to bring all the guests that we do to you. So good night, God bless you, and come again, please. Thank you, good night. Good night.